So we're going to continue looking at calculus here, specifically the derivative. In this whole unit, we're going to be looking at applications, various applications, both in sketching curves or sketching graphs, finding different features of graphs, but also in other applications too, like how do we find the best solution in a particular case? You know, optimization is what that's called. Um, we'll do some other things as well. But I wanted to start with where all this kind of came from. And really, all of calculus, we, we talked about already, came from, or the beginnings of calculus were from Leibniz and Newton. And uh, one of the things that led to this was this whole concept of optics. Optics was becoming more and more popular in their time. Um, you know, you had Galileo who had, before them, a long time before them, who had a uh, telescope. And, you know, they're, they're learning how to use mirrors and lenses um, to make things like glasses and telescopes and microscopes and all kinds of things to be able to explore the world around them more effectively. So at this point, they had learned that they were able to bend light to magnify or reflect or shrink things down so they could see them. So now they were studying, okay, so how do we actually do this more effectively? How do we predict how the light will bend? And in order to do that, you know, they had discovered this rule of reflection where, as you can see here, we have a ray of light coming in to hit a flat mirror and that's called the incident ray. And then it bounces off the reflected ray. And you have this normal. The normal is perpendicular to the surface of the mirror. And there's a, the, the reflection rule, basically, is that the angle of incidence, that's this angle over here, will always equal the angle of reflection. Okay, so in order to predict where the light is going to bounce to, you got to know what angle it's coming from. And the angle is always measured normal to the surface. Okay? Well, that's really easy if you're dealing with a flat mirror. It's a lot harder when you're dealing with a curved mirror or it's actually passing through a lens. Okay? Um, so how do we predict it when it's curved? How do we even find the normal, okay? So for example, this point right here, okay? We have this curved surface on this mirror, it looks like, okay? And um, in order to find where, where is this perpendicular to the surface, okay? Because the surface is constantly changing, well, you got to figure out what direction the surface is going at that exact moment. What's that? The derivative. The derivative or the tangent, right? So you had to find the tangent first so that you could then find the normal to it. And that way you could figure out, okay, now I can measure my angle of incidence and my angle of reflection, those are going to be equal. So now I know that, you know, if I have something there, it's going to go off that surface and it's going to come this direction, you know, and focus right here. And yes? So you're basically um, finding the, the, like, equate. Do you find the equation or the slope of the line that's it, it depends what you're wanting to do. Um, but typically, we'll actually go ahead and find the equation of the line. Um, if all we cared about was the angle, then yeah, we could just do the slope because then we could use the slope to figure out the angle um, with uh, some right triangle trig. But, but yeah, we'll, we'll be finding the equations of normal lines a lot in this. Yes? So... The line that's perpendicular to the tangent line will also be perpendicular to the surface that the object is being reflected off of at that 
Yes, at that moment in time, because remember the tangent tells us the direction of the surface at that exact moment, okay? So at this moment, right here where this point is, the surface is going, you know, this direction that the tangent is going, all right? That's our tangent. And then the normal is going to go perpendicular to that. So there's our normal. Okay, so let's actually look at this process uh, with a couple of examples. Um, so let's say you can kind of see here the, the idea here, but this is the part that we already did. I'm only going to do one of these for all of them. If you want to come back and do the second one for each of these, you can for some extra practice. But... Uh, if we want to find the equation of a tangent line, anytime you're finding the equation of any line, you've got to know the slope and you've got to know a point. All right? So when you're dealing with this here, the slope that we're dealing with for the tangent is going to be what? The derivative of y equal of y when then you plug in 2 and then... Okay, yeah, for this first one, we'd get the derivative, you plug in 2. That's going to be the slope of your tangent. We're going to do this second one here. Okay, so what is, uh, what is the derivative of y in this case? Uh, 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Good, okay. Or 1 over 2 root x. So what is the slope of the tangent line going to be? Yeah, 1 over 2 root 4, which is 1 fourth. Okay? Now, that's the slope that we need. Where's the point? At x equals 4, 4, 3. Okay, if you plug in 4 into... The function, square root of 4 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So that's the point for 3. Now, guys, we're back to Algebra 1. You just <coughs> got to get the equation of your line. So I don't care if you use slope-intercept form or point-slope form or whatever. If we use point-slope form, it's going to be y minus 3 equals 1 fourth times x minus 4. I solve for y, and I get 1 fourth x minus 1 plus 3 is going to be a plus 2. So now I know the equation of the tangent line to that radical function at the point 4, 3. Okay? So again, if we were to draw this, for example, here's 0, 1. This would look like this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, here's the point 1, 2, here's the point 4, 3. And we just found the equation 1 fourth x plus 2. Okay, so here's 1, 2. So that tangent line is going to look like this. Okay? And it's intersecting right here at 4, 3. How do you find the tangent, like exact line? I'm sorry, what? How do you like plot that tangent line? Just do your best. <laughs> I, got, I got the y intercept at 2, and I knew it was hitting the point 4, 3, so I just made it hit those two. Okay. It's a sketch, so it's not going to be 100% perfect, but if you do it on your calculator, it'll look something like that. Yeah, that's the parent function just shifted up one. So, by the way, when you're doing these, visualizing it will be helpful, okay? So, if you can see what's going on and test your equation, I mean, it's going to be really obvious if you get, you know, if you get something like this for your tangent line that you did something wrong, you know? So, that's where visualizing it is really helpful. Okay, so that's the part we did in the last unit. We did a, a, a little bit of this. 
let's look at the normal line now, okay? The normal line is perpendicular to a curve, so it's also going to be perpendicular to the tangent line at a point, okay? If it's perpendicular to the curve at that point, then it's going to be perpendicular to the tangent line at that point. So the first thing you got to do when you're talking perpendicular in lines, you need to find the slope of the tangent line. And then notice the slope of the normal, they use M with a sub N here for normal, is the opposite reciprocal. Again, this is just back to Algebra 1 stuff. Once you know the slope of a line, perpendicular to it, it's the opposite reciprocal. Mm -hmm. So f, f prime of a is the slope of the derivative? Correct. I mean, the slope of the At a. The derivative, never mind. It's the slope of the curve. It is the derivative. At a. So again, here, if we're doing this second one, we'll continue with this, this example. The derivative was 1 over 2 root x, and we already knew that the slope of the tangent line was 1 fourth, so what's the slope of the normal line going to be? Negative 4. Negative 4, yeah, negative 4. Okay, so now we, um, we, we still have the point 4, 3, and if we look at our diagram, now we can see, uh, we can get the equation of the normal line, but we can also see it in action, okay? So let's get the equation. I'll do this in blue. It's going to be y minus 3, same process here, just a different slope, equals negative 4 times x minus 4, okay? So we have now uh, y equals a negative 4x, plus 16 plus 3 is a plus 19, okay? Um, so this is going to be way off, the, uh, way off the graph from what we can see. But if I plug in, I know it's going to hit 4, 3. Let's get another point. Let's say I put in uh, 5 for x. If I plug in 5 for x, what do I get? Five for x. We get negative one. All right. We get negative one. So five negative one is right here. So now, actually, I should do that in blue. So now we have here our normal line, and you guys can see. I mean, obviously, we can't eyeball and know it's exactly 90 degrees, but it at least makes sense. Okay, and this is another way you can check yourself. Does this look perpendicular to what the tangent would be? Yeah, that's that looks reasonably accurate. So we can be assured that we probably did everything correctly. Okay, so there is our normal line, the equation right there. Okay. Negative 4x plus 19 equals y. All right, so that's, uh, that's one example we're going to practice using here. Um, another thing I want to consider here is the horizontal tangent, okay? The horizontal tangent. This will become even more significant as we go through the next few lessons. But the horizontal tangent is when the slope is zero. Okay, this is a real significance here. Um, so if the slope equals zero, we're going to figure out where the derivative equals zero. Okay, so again, looking at the example we've been using, if dy dx is 1 over 2 root x, when is that going to equal zero? Now, that would be 1 over 0. That would be undefined. What did you say, Murat? Never. Never. Okay, when will a fraction equal 0? Only when the numerator is 0, right? Well, the numerator is always going to be 1 here. So no matter what we plug in, it's always going to 
um, it's always going to equal something. All right. So this one will have no horizontal tangents. Okay. This will never equal zero. Okay. Now, if we look at the first one over here, though, dy dx equals what? Come on, guys. 1 minus 4x. One, 1 minus 4x. So when will this equal 0? 1 fourth. At x equals 1 fourth. Okay? Now, since this is a parabola, okay, you could also figure out that the vertex is going to be at 1 fourth. All right, which kind of gives us a little preview as to what these, where these horizontal tangents are going to end up. They're going to end up um, at max and min points. And then there's one other type of point we'll look at as well called a plateau point. But um, our max and min points will always have these horizontal tangents. Okay. Um, now, there's a couple ways we could be, we, there are a couple of things we might use this for. We might just want the x-coordinate. Where does that happen? We might want the actual point, so we would then plug in 1 fourth and 1 fourth minus uh, 1 eighth plus 3 is going to be 3 and 1 eighth. All right, so the point would be the point 1 fourth, 3 and 1 eighth. Or in this case here, we're, we're asked to find the equation of the horizontal tangent. So the equation here is going to be just y equals 3 and 1 eighth. Okay? So again, make sure you read carefully as to what you're being asked to find. Are you asked to be, are you asked to find just the value or are you asked to find a point? Or are you asked to find an equation of something? Okay? All right, one last thing, and I'm going to let you guys start practicing on your own here, and that is just doing one example here using a natural log function, okay? And this says, uh, show that the equation of the tangent to y equals ln of x at the point where y is negative 1 is y equals ex minus 2. Okay? So they told us what the equation ought to be. We just got to prove it's that. All right? And this kind of thing happens quite a bit. All right? So, first of all, what's the point of contact or the point of tangency? 1 over x. No. Y equals... <clears throat> Um, one over x. Natural log of negative one. one. No. One. What are we given, guys? We're given oh, it's one. e times negative one minus two. What? Oh, okay. what are we given here? Um, the original function. L of x. Y is ln of x. Mm -hmm. And we know y equals negative one. Negative one. Okay. So when does negative 1 equal ln of x? When x is dx minus. Um, Come on, guys. How do we solve a logarithmic equation? We've got to know this. Not negative e. You're on the right track. We got to rewrite this as an exponential. This is a log base e of x equals uh, negative one. Okay. Oh, so it's e to the x power, right? E to the e to the negative two. Negative x. Negative one. Okay. Wait, e to the negative one power. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 
Come on, guys. We, we can't be this rusty on this. Log base E of X equals negative 1. You rewrite it as an exponential. E is the base. A log is just an exponent, so it's E to the negative 1, and that will equal the argument. I thought you wrote Y equals ln X twice. Yeah, negative 1 equals ln of x. So. All right, so there uh, we have our point of contact. Our point is 1 over e negative 1. Okay, that's the point. Do not change these to decimals. Leave them as e's. Okay? Now we want the slope of the tangent at that point. So how are we finding the slope of the tangent? Take the derivative, all right? So what's dy dx? 1 over x. 1 over x. So what's 1 over e to the negative 1? Yeah, that's just e. That is the slope of our tangent line now. So now we have a point. We have a slope. We can find the equation of our tangent line. So we have y minus y1. So y minus a negative 1 equals the slope times x minus the x-coordinate. And that's y plus 1 equals ex minus 1. We subtract the 1 from both sides, and we get y equals ex minus 2. Okay. By the way, notice I showed one extra step in this process because it is a show problem. Anytime you're told to show, just show every step, okay? Make sure it's very clear what you're doing. Wait, what is that extra step that you showed? Well, I, I showed this one. We just said that one earlier. Okay. But uh, I would go ahead and just show it just to be safe. The yes? second step, it says e to the negative one, but it's like one over e to the negative one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's how it became E. It's 1 over 1 over E, so it's just E. Okay? All right, so uh, from here on out, we've got some practice problems I've given you. I want you to go ahead and start trying some of those the last seven minutes here, and uh, you can finish those up for tomorrow, okay?